Hey everyone, it's Nick again, and this week we're going to be talking about how low code is dead, long live vibe coding. Yeah, that's a real clickbaity title, and uh, thank you for indulging me, and again, sorry for bringing you in. What do you mean low code is dead? What is vibe coding? So let's talk a little bit about vibe coding and what it is. It's a new buzzword. You might have heard about it. You might have seen some YouTube videos about it. This is my interpretation of it, so take it for what, take it or leave it. Um, but basically, what is vibe coding? What is it? Now, vibe coding to me isn't really a technology or framework, um, but it's been described as a software development mindset. Now, what does that mean? That means um, you're taking a mindset and applying it to development techniques. So as a developer, how vibe coding works, instead of actually writing the code, what you're going to do is you're going to get AI to do it. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your ideas, you're going to take your concepts, and you're going to create prompts in natural language, and you're going to give it to the AI, and it's going to generate the code for you. If the, And you're going to try to run it or try to compile it. If any errors come up, you take those errors, you paste them back into your tool of choice, and it will tell you, try to fix those errors. And you kind of reiterate that way. The whole idea is you're not actually writing code. Now, if you're a vibe coder, some will go in and say you can modify the code. There are other vibe coder purists, as they're saying. This is such a new concept. It's only a few weeks old and there's already different camps set up. But anyways, the purists say you shouldn't even look at the code. You shouldn't even worry about the code. You let AI do the work for you. It seems pretty controversial. I know a lot of developers would be probably a little bit uncomfortable with this concept as well, wanting to know how things work. Fair enough. I used to like driving stick, stick shift. That's something we did growing up. We drove stick. Now we're moving into most places in the world into automatic cars with automatic transmissions to electric cars where you don't even, your transmissions are different. It's all based on your electric motors. And we're gonna move into a world of self-driving cars and we're getting there already. Things are evolving. However, so is software development. And this is sort of the next thing that's coming along. Now, that's one thing for pro developers going in, creating the code, saving a ton of time. We probably all use those tools like Copilot, um, GitHub for Copilot, GitHub Copilot, Copilot for GitHub, anyways, to generate code and to build software that way. And they work pretty well, but this is taking it to the next level where we're getting AI to do all the work. Now, here's another concept. As a citizen developer, a low code, low coder, a maker, even a business user, why would you waste your time with low code tools when you could use something like vibe coding and go directly to the pro code itself? You can have your cake and eat it. Now, that's a pretty controversial statement. Of course, there's a lot of good reasons why we would want to stick um, with some of these things, definitely from the power platform and Dataverse. It has security, authentication. It has all these constructs that we can use. But of course, we could apply vibe coding to that as well. So vibe coding in the power platform. So let's think of something that may many of you have probably run into before, business rules. So last week I was working with some colleagues. We needed to work on a model-driven app where we needed to hide and show some fields in the model-driven app. So basically, again, trying to go with a no-code, low-code approach, we thought business rules. Definitely, that would be the way to do it. Now, for those of you who worked in business rules, you do realize that the user interface is a little bit dated, um, but it does work well. It does things very good for very simple tasks. Now, our particular requirement got complex a little bit quickly. We needed to traverse and check data in other related records. That's something we couldn't do in business rules. So we decided, hmm, we're going to have to do this in client-side JavaScript. JavaScript requires usually some pro code development skills. And this is something I can do. I began to spec it out. I began to put it into our Azure DevOps. I began to write out the requirement. Uh, this is a process that we do in our in the Agile process that we work with. And I kind of looked at what I was writing. I was putting in the schema names of what needed to be updated. And I thought, hmm, I copied this. And I thought, I'm going to take a vibe coding approach to this. I dumped it into chat GPT. And minutes later, it generated perfectly working JavaScript. It provided me with how it all worked. It also provided me with instructions of how to take that code and put it into my model-driven app, into the designer. As a pro coder, this is a little bit unsettling. It's sort of like, wow, what uh, work do we need to do with all of this? But I also thought from a low coder approach, trying to approach things from low code, no code, that 
we're actually providing tools that the low code makers, the citizen developers, business users can generate pro code. They don't even need to look at it. So let's take this concept of business rules and um, I kind of walk you through the process of applying a vibe coder approach. So I've created this model driven donation management app. Um, I have my list of donations. I'm going to create a brand new donation. Now I have a particular user requirement that basically says if my donor, I'm going to choose a donor, good old Jim. If the donation amount is over a thousand dollars, I'm going to want to send a gift to the donor. Now I want to make sure my users are reminded of this. So in order to do that, I could easily set up a business rule. I'm just going to put in 10,000. And we see here that as soon as I put in 10,000, it's showing me this donation. Thank you. Uh, mouse pad, t-shirt, water bottle, and I can kind of collect the rest of the information and away I go. Now, how did I implement this? Using business rules, it's pretty straightforward. So here is the business rules designer. I've basically gone in and filled in the values where here the donation amount is greater than a thousand. I've added these different components. We can drag and drop these on the screen. Um, this is an older interface. It works fairly well. And for this particular requirement, it actually, you know, make the requirement. However, I found that with business rules, things can get complex pretty quickly and it goes above and beyond of what this user interface can do. All right, so I'm basically going to take my requirements. I'm going to choose ChatGPT3 Mini High. That's great at coding and logic. Um, there are other models you could choose here. I'm going to put in my prompt. You're a Power Platform Pro developer. Create JavaScript for a model-driven application that will show the donation thank you. I've been using the schema names here uh, when their donation amount has a value greater than 1,000 and also make the donation thank you mandatory. So basically the same instructions that I would basically go into the business rules editor with and kind of follow that same logic as I built out my business rule. I'm going to hit the generate here. It is going into the reasoning mode, puts back the information. The user wants to create a JavaScript code snippet for a model driven app, and then basically gives me a description and generates the JavaScript. I'm just gonna copy this. I don't necessarily need to know JavaScript. I do, but if I don't, I'm just gonna copy it. And then here below, I have all the implementation steps about creating a web resource, going to the form on load event, field on change event publishing. So these are instructions that you can find at MS Learn. Probably many of you who've done coding have followed different things or you use the XROM toolbox, web resources manager, different things. That's all good. So basically what I would do, I would go into my form here and I've already added that handler. Basically, I would go in, create a new library, um, and I can do this by just pasting in that code, giving it a name. I've already done this. I've got my library here. And then I just do want to be able to go in and select my function. I'm going to like this existing one, the toggle donation thank you field, which again is from here. It basically told me that in the steps about registering that function and basically passing the execution context, all of these things. And now basically when I run this code, we pretty much see the same thing. Anything over $10,000 will make sure that this donation thank you is mandatory and we actually is visible. And if I went below, let's say $1 cheap Paul Jim, we see these fields disappear. So the code is working. Now, I didn't really time any of this. Um, I'm sure that if I put a timer on it, I probably would have saved a bit of time here generating the JavaScript code versus using the business rules. Second thing to point out here is I don't need to know JavaScript. I just cut and paste. So I could be a maker, citizen dev, cut and paste that code in. And then I can go through the regular testing. In terms of security and governance and all of this, again, um, we are working within the context of the power platform. So everything here should still, all those rules that shall apply, we still need to configure that. But from a vibe coding perspective, it could kind of mean the end of low code low code being something like business rules. Maybe it can do other things too, like, you know, power automate flows, classic workflows, power effects. We could actually go in through these codes and maybe build plugins. It's all kind of scary stuff. I'm kind of throwing out a lot of concepts here, but this is where vibe coding is going. Um, is this going to take away a pro developer's job? Definitely not because there's still some very complex things to take into account. 
is a low coder or a maker, is this going to give them, I think it's going to give them a whole new set of tools where they can create pro code solutions very easily. They don't even necessarily need to know it. They just need to know how to use the tools. That's kind of a scary concept. Are things like Power Pages and Canvas apps going to go away? I don't think they will. I think, again, because of the platform and all the benefits that it provides, they're not going away. But I would be, I would suspect that in a year or so, if I was going to create a Canvas app using vibe coding techniques, I'm going to be able to create that Canvas app. It's going to look and feel the same as a Canvas app I'd create today. But if we were to peel back the covers, we might not be seeing things like Power Effects. We might actually see the C sharp code or the JavaScript code being created kind of behind the scenes, behind the scenes again, or maybe it would create power effects. I don't know. I'm just sort of saying that this is something to consider. Vibe coding is this new thing. It's something that I think we all need to kind of get on board with. It is going to revolutionize how we create software, especially in the power platform. And it's an exciting time. Maybe I'm wrong. Looking forward to your comments on this. This might generate a little bit of chatter. Um, hope you enjoyed this video and can't wait to the next one.